As was announced this week, our study is in the third epistle of John. Very short little epistle. This morning we'd like to draw your attention to the 11th verse of this third letter of John. In which John said, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. For he that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil has not seen God. Now, this little exhortation by John follows the example that John gave or the person that John spoke about who was an evil man. And right following this, he'll speak to you about a good man. And in between the illustrations of an evil man and a good man, John exhorts us to follow after that which is good, not following after the evil men. Going back to verse 9, John speaks about this fellow Diotrephes. John says of him, he loves to have the preeminence. And we read that he had set himself even against the apostle John. Back in the Gospel of Mark, we read the story in chapter 10 of how the two brothers, James and John, came to Jesus one day and they said, Jesus, we'd like you to do a favor for us. And Jesus said, just what is that? They said, well, when you come into your kingdom, we would like that you would let one of us sit on your right hand and the other sit on your left. And Jesus said to them, you really don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink of the cup that I'm going to drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism wherewith I will be baptized? And they answered and said, oh yes, Lord, we, we can drink of the cup and we, we can be baptized. And Jesus said, well, you indeed will be baptized as I am baptized, but to give unto you this favor is really not mine to give, but it will be given to those to whom it has been appointed. Now the rest of the disciples, when they heard this conversation and heard of James and John's desire for this position of sort of prominence in the kingdom, they became angry with them. They thought, those guys trying to go in the back door and, you know, get this position when they were all hoping for that themselves. And, and so they were upset with James and John. So Jesus called all of his disciples to him. And he said, the Gentiles who rule over the people, exercise lordship over them. The great ones seek to be authorities over the others. But he said, it shall not be so among you. For whosoever will be great among you let him be your servant. And whosoever would be chief, let him become the servant of all. For I did not come to be ministered unto, but I came to minister and to give my life as a ransom for all. So Jesus is saying that in the church, there should not be an exercise of lordship over the people. 
If God has given to you a position of authority within the church, then you need to realize that God has actually placed you as a servant to the church. You're not to use that position to lord over people. But take the opportunity to minister to people and to serve people. Now this fellow Diotrephes had been given a leadership in the church but he was abusing the power and the authority. He was using it to rule over the people. He loved this position of preeminence. He was one of those kinds of person that when given a little authority became a tyrant. And he was abusing that authority doing exactly the opposite of what Jesus said we should do if we were granted authority within the church. And he had raised himself up against even John. He was speaking pratting words against John. You know, there are some people that think that they can actually elevate themselves above others by putting others down. And if I am able to look at someone and begin to criticize and judge them, it actually, in a sense, puts me in a position above them. Because I can see their flaws and I can judge them. And that is sort of the attempt to exalt and elevate yourself. I sometimes hear people even speaking against Billy Graham. And it is, is an endeavor to say, well, Billy, you know, he associates with liberals and so forth. And, and it's sort of exalting, it's, a, it's sort of a pharisaical kind of a thing. Well, you see, I wouldn't do that if I was in his shoes and I would be better than he is kind of a thing, you know. Or I am better than he is because I can judge him. And this fellow Diotrephes was, was doing that with John, the, the, the beloved, the disciple of Jesus, the, the one chosen to be an apostle. And this fellow was, was speaking against him. You have to be careful about uh, speaking against uh, those that God has given authority. There are some people that think that it is a boost to their own spiritual stature when they can criticize and find fault with men that God is using. Now, years ago, uh, when I was just a child in school, and most of you won't remember that there might be some. Not too many as, are as old as I am, but... Uh, there used to be these things we would say Confucius say and all of these little sayings Confucius say I can remember one was Confucius say many men smoke Fu Manchu and uh, you know all of these little crazy things uh, there was another one that was uh, Confucius say he who throws mud loses ground now, I don't know if Confucius said that or not, but I mean, that's, that's sharp. <laughs> you can't throw mud without losing ground. It doesn't elevate you to throw mud at others. It actually denigrates you by doing so. The Bible tells us not to speak evil one of another. But this diatrophies he was speaking even evil of John. So John said, I'll deal with him if I come there. And John, you remember, was called by Jesus the son of thunder. I feel sorry for that diatrophies had John gone there. Another problem with this diatrophies is that he did not show hospitality. He would not receive the brethren. Now, in the early days of the church, 
the church was spreading very rapidly over the world. And men were not really trained for leadership within the church. And so they did have certain men with the calling of evangelists, others with the calling of prophets, and they were itinerant, itinerant evangelists or prophets. They would move around from church to church. And they would come into a church and they would minister to the people and then they would move on to another church as they would minister to the little fledgling believers. Now in those days they didn't have any lovely hotels like uh, the Hampton Courts and so you just couldn't go and get a nice room for the night. But you had to sort of depend upon uh, the hospitality of the people. And thus, being hospitable was an extremely important thing. In fact, in the early church, as they were to appoint certain men for leadership, elders or presbyteros or the bishops of the church, the requirements that were given, one of them was that they be given to hospitality. They were men whose homes would be open to take in those travelers that would be coming through. Not Diotrephes. He would not open his door to the itinerant evangelist. It probably speaks of a, um, a weakness. He was threatened by others of skill and ability. And when you see a person who becomes so protective and he becomes, uh, you know, just not accepting or receiving anyone, quite often that's a sign that that person is very insecure. And he's worried that the hearts of the people might be taken by another person. So... Diotrephes would not receive these itinerant evangelists. But worse than that, he was exercising this kind of lordship over the church that he wouldn't allow the people in the church to open their doors. And if anyone did, he'd kick them out of the church. I mean, this guy was sort of like the guy on TV with the cigar and the horses and all. I mean, he was just, you know, yelling at the people and exercising this, this lordship over them. Exactly what the Lord said you weren't to do. On the other hand, there was this fellow Demetrius. And we read that he was of good report. That is, he had a good reputation. Now, the Greek word that is translated good report and good reputation is the same word that is oftentimes translated a good witness. That is, his life was a good witness of Jesus Christ. He lived sort of an exemplary kind of life. His life reflected Jesus Christ. It, it was the kind of life that uh, people could see the Lord in him. Jesus told his disciples that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon them to be witnesses of him, both in Jerusalem and Judea and to the uttermost parts of the earth. This man, Demetrius, was a good witness of Jesus. In the book of Acts, when problems developed in the church over the distribution of the welfare program, there were certain there who felt that a particular group of widows were not being treated fairly uh, when they came to receive welfare from the church. And so they came to the apostles with their complaint. And the apostles said, well, it isn't really right that we should leave the word of God and prayer 
to wait on tables. So let's appoint seven men of good reputation. Now, that's the same word. Seven men of good report or of a good witness. Men who are real witnesses of Jesus who are filled with the Holy Spirit and who are full of wisdom. And let them take care of the doling out of the church's welfare program in order that we might give ourselves to the Word of God and to prayer. And the saying, please them all. But it's interesting that in choosing men even for a lesser position of service within the church, than the elders, these men were to be of good reputation. Now, Demetrius qualified. He was of good reputation. And uh, he uh, was one uh, whose record was true. John said, I bear record. The record is true. Back in verse 4 of this third letter, John said, I have no greater joy than to know that my children walk in truth. And, and I understand what John is saying as a pastor. There's no greater joy than to know that your children are abiding in the truth, walking in the truth. So, two men, one whose life is a bad example, the other whose life is a good example. And between his little profile of the two men, John writes, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. Throughout our lives, we're going to meet people that will be examples for evil or examples for good. There are certain people that we'll be attracted to that will have an influence upon our lives. And according to what they're what they are, their influence will either be an evil influence upon us or a good influence upon us. We are all of us very impressionable. I think of all of the poor little girls who followed and sought to emulate the example of Madonna. They wore the lacy clothes and they sought to look and to be sexy. And in so doing, many of them ruined their lives, their futures, because they went around seeking to look and to be sexy and became pregnant and all of the problems that developed out of that because they were following a bad example. John said, don't follow that which is evil, but that which is good. I think of the guys today that are trying to follow the example of Dennis Rodman. They color their hair and they swagger around. And they display an attitude of arrogance. They want to bully others and they disdain the rules. And he has become a very bad influence on many young men. John said, don't follow that which is evil, but that which is good. The Bible tells us that no man lives unto himself. What does that mean? That means that your life, whether you like it or not, is influencing others 
for good or for bad. No matter where you are, there are people that are looking to you as a role model. And they are following the examples that they see. They seek to emulate you. You can't help that. That's just the way things are. No man lives unto himself. We all of us exercise a certain amount of influence over others for good or for bad, whatever the case may be. Your child is learning how to be a parent from what they observe in you. Thus the importance of being a good example. And thus the importance of following good examples. Paul wrote, follow me even as I also follow Jesus Christ. He wrote to Timothy and he said, Timothy, be an example unto the believers in your conduct, in your walk, in your love, your manner of living. Let your life be an example that people might follow the example that they see in you. In the book of Hebrews, there is the exhortation not to be slothful, but follow those who through faith and patience inherited the promises. In other words, pick good examples to follow. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Now Jesus said that the evening that he took the towel, girded himself and went around and washed the disciples' feet. And having washed their feet, he said, do you see what I've done? And they said, yes, Lord. He said, now you call me Lord, and, and that's, that's right, I am. But if I being your Lord, wash your feet, then you ought to wash one another's feet. It's the same principle of if you're in the role of leadership, be a servant to all. Jesus set the example that we might follow in his steps. And that's exactly what Peter said. Jesus has left for us an example that we should follow in his steps. How important it is that we choose good role models to follow after. But to me, being a good role model is very important. to set an example for others. Important because there are certain intrinsic benefits to living a good life. It will come back and reward you. If you're doing that which is good, if you're doing that which is proper, It'll come back and, and you'll be rewarded by it. I am so grateful that my mother was extremely health conscious and saw that we had good nourishing food as we grew up. Whole grain cereals for breakfast, leafy vegetable meat and green and yellow vegetable for dinner and always saw that we had well-balanced diets that we well I don't want to step on your toes but she would say now son don't drink coffee coffee's not good for you so I never drank coffee she said tea has tannic acid and that's not healthy you shouldn't drink tea so I never drank tea Milk's good for you, son. Drink lots of milk. I drank lots of milk. 
Alcohol is bad for you. I never touched alcohol, never drank alcohol. Cigarettes are horrible for your health. Never touch a cigarette. I never touched a cigarette to smoke one, and even touching them, as I have to every once in a while when I see that someone has tossed a cigarette on the sidewalk outside and I have to pick it up, I hate it. I hate to touch it. There's something in me that just, the early training, it just hold it as lightly and toss it as quick as I can. It just bothers me to touch a cigarette because I heard all my life, never touch a cigarette. They're dirty. But, well, I, I never took one drag on a cigarette, and I didn't inhale either, ever. <laughs> But I'm reaping the benefits. God has blessed me with a strong, healthy body because I took care of my body as I was growing up. And, and so there are the intrinsic benefits of living a good life. But more important than the intrinsic benefits that I have gained from it is the fact that I have two boys that were growing up following their dad, walking in his footsteps, and to leave for them a good, positive example was important to me. Because your children look at you as a role model. They are learning how to be dads from what they observe in you. They're learning how to be moms from what they see in you. And they will follow the examples that they see. I had a great dad, but he did have a bad flaw. He had a quick-fired temper a bad temper, and it would trigger just very quickly. I can remember when I was four years old, Dad came home from work, and I had received a little leather purse, and the person gave me a few coins. And so I was wanting to show my dad this new little leather purse and the coins that I had. And evidently, he was wanting to communicate to my mom or something, and, and I was pestering him. And he finally grabbed that little purse out of my hands, and I'll never forget it, though I was only four years old. He threw that thing across the room, and it went through the front window going out. And boy, do I remember that. But the unfortunate thing is that I also developed a quick temper and would throw things because that's the model I saw. And I remember when I was working at El Toro Marine Base, building barracks when I was in high school. And as I was framing this one barrack, I hit my thumb with a hammer. And that quick temper, I threw that hammer way out in the field. And as I went out to the field to retrieve the hammer, I heard the other guys snickering because I yelled, got their attention before I threw it. Angry, upset, tempered flew off. But the painful thing was I had been witnessing to these fellows that I was a Christian. And now this terrible display, 
I was embarrassed. I was humiliated. As I was walking back with my hammer, head down, I felt so horrible inside. Lord, I failed you, failed you miserably. What kind of a witness is that to them? And, and I was just really under heavy, heavy conviction. But you see, I was only following a role model that had been set for me. That I prayed, God, help me, please help me never to do that again as long as I live. I never want to lose my temper again, Lord, as long as I live. Please help me. And you know, from that day to this, God has given me victory over that temper that I once had. And how I thank God for that. And I recognize it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be then a good witness. And I recognize and realize that the Lord helped me to overcome a trait that I learned as a child. And they're not easily overcome. The Bible tells us don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And knowing that my life is setting an example for others, knowing that I was setting an example for my boys. I sought to set for them an example that they could follow that would bring them into a relationship with God and bring them into a good, happy, successful life. Not only for myself, do I want to follow that which is good and to avoid that which is evil? But for the sake of those who are looking to me, I feel that heavy obligation and responsibility of setting for them an example. As Paul said to Timothy, be an example to the believers of a godly life of love, of service. Look at your children and how do you want them to grow up? You see, we all, I think, have ambitions for our children that they might be better even than we are, but that is rarely the case. They'll usually be what we are because they've seen the role model in us. And I think it's important that we sort of examine ourselves, as the scripture tells us to do. Therefore, let a man examine himself, and if we will judge ourselves, we'll not be judged to God. What kind of an example, what kind of a role model are you to your children, to your family, to the people you work with? What kind of an example are you setting for them? Very important. This word of John, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good, is such an important bit of advice. May God help us to follow it. Father, we pray that you will help us to be good examples unto others of what a believer should be, how a believer should respond and react, how a believer should live. Lord, let our lives be so lived that others might be able to follow the example that we set. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand? 
It may be that some of you have been trying to change your life. There are things that you have picked up and you find that they're awfully hard to let go. Once they become a part of your wharf and woof of your being, they're, they're awfully hard to discard. You may be struggling with them. You don't like it. In fact, there are things that you may be even hate. But you can't seem to get victory. They seem to have become just so much a part of you that try as you may, you can't seem to free yourself. The pastors are down here in the front for the purpose of praying for you. Because you see, the glorious gospel is that Jesus can do for you what you can't do for yourself. And he can accomplish those changes in you that you, with all of your efforts, can't change. And what is impossible for you is very simple for him. And if you'll just simply turn it over to him, you'll find that he can do for you what you would like to have done, making you a better person, making your life an example for good, the good of others, as well as the good of yourself. So feel free after we're dismissed to come on down. They're here to pray for you and to pray with you that you might experience the power of God's Holy Spirit in your life transforming you and changing you into the person that God wants you to be. A godly example to others.